Hi, my name is Michael Spörg from Graz University of Technology and in the next few minutes I will show you how we ensure end-to-end -end dependability requirements in cloud-based Bluetooth Low Energy applications. Bluetooth Low Energy, or short BLE, is one of the most popular wireless technologies for connecting constrained devices to the Internet of Things. BLE is widely available in consumer devices, has a very low power consumption and BLE connections are reliable per default. Some BLE-based IoT systems out there operate in time-critical domains such as smart health applications. Let's take for example a BLE-based heart rate monitoring system. In this system, a BLE node measures and sends heart rate measurements to a cloud server on the internet. Due to the safety constraints of this application, 99% of all the node transmissions need to be received by the server within one second. When building such applications, however, you run into a number of challenges. The first one being, how can such a low power node actually capture end-to-end -end network delay and packet loss? Because communication between node and server may experience dynamic changes of delay or packet loss across the whole network path. For example, in the BLE subnet, packets may be delayed due to link layer problems such as Wi-Fi interference. On the external network path, packets may be delayed or even lost due to buffer congestion, routing changes or link degradations. Existing studies either completely focus on the local BLE subnet or completely focus on the internet path. How low-power nodes such as BLE nodes can actually measure end-to-end -end metrics like delay and loss is unknown in research. The next challenge is how BLE nodes can sustain end-to-end -end requirements such as a given latency or reliability while operating on a limited energy budget. BLE nodes can adapt their BLE parameters to change their timeliness or reliability, but existing approaches that model the effect of BLE parameters on these metrics do not apply here. Existing approaches focus only on packet transmissions, neglect important BLE parameters and only work in the local BLE subnet, completely neglecting the delay across the internet. In our work we tackle those challenges and start by investigating cloud-based BLE applications, where we evaluate the performance of different BLE parameters and different internet connectivity. Next, I will show you how BLE nodes can estimate their end-to-end -end network latency by using new BLE timeliness models and network latency estimation techniques. BLE nodes can use our findings to sustain end-to-end -end requirements by adapting their BLE connection parameters due to network changes. Finally, I will show you a real-world experimental evaluation where we investigate the performance of packet transmissions and receptions between BLE nodes and a cloud server. We start with a preliminary study over seven days where we measure the end-to-end -end latency and reliability of communication between BLE nodes and an Amazon Web Service server in Frankfurt, Germany. Nodes use IPv6 over BLE communication to send UDP packets to the Amazon server. Whenever the server receives such a UDP packet, it responds with a short UDP-based acknowledgements. In these tests, all nodes use fixed BLE parameters and either a wired or cellular internet connectivity technology. Although we use IPv6 over BLE communication for the remainder of our work, all of our work also applies to the standard GUT-based BLE communication. Communication in the BLE subnet between node and router happens only during so-called BLE connection events that you can see here in blue. The timing of these connection events is defined by two parameters of the BLE connection. The first one being the BLE connection interval, which defines the time between the start of two consecutive connection events. The second parameter is the BLE slave latency that allows the node to skip unnecessary connection events when no data needs to be transmitted and the node can conserve energy. In order to have a reliable data exchange between node and router, 
will eConnections make use of autonomous packet retransmissions. This means that no packets are lost over the BLE connections, but linked layer errors such as multipath fading or interference may cause significant packet delays. For example, here you can see the difference of BLE communication under no interference versus BLE communication under Wi-Fi interference. Wi-Fi interference may cause sudden link layer problems that cause packets to be significantly delayed compared to no interference. Next, we take a look at the delay and loss across the external network path. And here we can see that the used connectivity technologies significantly affect delay and loss. For example, the wired connection that we measured has a median delay of 9 milliseconds and an average packet reliability of 99.4%. In comparison, the cellular connection has a median delay of 322 milliseconds and has an average reliability of only 97.6%. In the histogram to the right, you can see that the wired connection is very stable and has a maximum delay of only approximately 200 milliseconds. The cellular connection, in contrast, is quite unstable and may experience a maximum latency of approximately 3 seconds. After our preliminary study, we start by investigating how nodes can estimate end-to-end -end network latency. More specifically, our nodes use new BLE timeliness models to estimate the one-way delays TTX and TRX in a way that is fully compliant to the BLE specification and fully adheres to the end-to-end -end principle of IP. Your BLE application can now use our approaches directly because they do not require any changes to BLE or any of the routing devices. One important finding of our work is that existing application traffic cannot be used to estimate the one-way delays. The reason for that is the unpredictable delays of packet from router to node that is caused by the BLE slave latency, making the BLE connection asymmetric per design. To cope with this problem, BLE nodes measure the delay in the local subnet using standardized BLE HCI information. A node can use this existing standard HCI information to estimate the maximum delay of transmissions from node to router or from receptions from router to node within the BLE subnet. This provides the node with the worst case delays of communication over the BLE connection. Unfortunately, the BLE node cannot use any existing application information to estimate the average and maximum delay across the external network path. Therefore, a node needs to use periodic and short probing bursts to probe the external network delay. To start such a burst, the node temporarily uses the fastest possible BNE connection setting and measures the round trip time of application packets. After the probe is over, the node uses an adapted TCP RTT estimation approach to calculate the maximum latency across the external network path. Our detailed evaluation that you can see in our paper has shown that even very infrequent and short probing bursts are able to accurately estimate the maximum delay across the external network path. For example, in our application we only exchange 10 probing bursts every 1000 application packet exchanges. Next. We show how BLE nodes can use our BLE models and our network latency estimation approach to sustain end-to-end -end requirements. To sustain given end-to-end -end latency bounds, a node continuously monitors network and application metrics such as the round-trip time, reliability, connection timing or external network delay. The node feeds those measured metrics into our BLE timeliness models and checks if the end-to-end -end dependability requirements can be sustained. If this is not the case, for example due to Wi-Fi interference or sudden delays across the internet path, the BLE node 
calculates new BLE connection parameters that allow the node to sustain the given end-to-end -end requirements while minimizing the node's power consumption. Let's look at one of the two adaptation approaches that we lay out in our paper. In this approach, a node adapts its connection interval and slave latency parameters during runtime to sustain an upper bound on the delay between node and server. When the node detects that the BLE parameters need to be adapted, it uses our models to calculate a new connection interval and slave latency value. Then the node uses standardized BLE commands to adapt the actual connection interval and slave latency of the BLE connection. After a mandatory delay of 7 connection events, the new BLE parameters are applied and the requirements are again sustained. Finally, let's look at the real-world evaluation of our approaches. We implement our models and our adaptation approaches on the popular Nordic Semiconductor NRF52 platform using the Sapphire real-time operating system. We reuse the setup of our preliminary study where nodes exchange data with an Amazon server in Frankfurt and we reuse the dependability requirements of our heart rate application. This means that 99% of all the node transmissions need to be received by the server within 1000 milliseconds. First, we evaluate the performance of a node sustaining a 1000 millisecond bound of transmissions from node to the server and the reliability requirement of 99%. We start with an environment where no interference is present and a wired internet connection is used. We measure the percentage of delayed packets, so the packets that exceed this 1000 millisecond threshold that you can see on the top. And we also measure the current consumption of the node device seen at the bottom. Currently, the figure shows only the fastest possible static setting of a BLE connection, which results in a high current consumption on the node because the radio is on very often but also results in no packets being delayed. We add a static and efficient configuration to our figure that shows the configuration that would sustain this end-to-end -end delay under ideal conditions. This static setting results in a very low current consumption on the node, but results in approximately 4% of packets being delayed due to the internet path or link layer problems. When comparing our both adaptation approaches seen here in blue to the other fixed approaches, we can see that our adaptation approaches sustain the end-to-end -end dependability requirements while limiting the energy consumption on the slave device. This also holds true in another scenario where plenty of Wi-Fi interference is present in the BLE subnet and the cellular internet connection is used. Next, we measure the performance of our approaches when the server needs to transmit messages to a node within a thousand millisecond bound. Under no Wi-Fi interference and using a wired connection, we see that both of our adaptive approaches sustain the end-to-end -end Rx requirement while limiting power draw on the node. We also see that this holds true even when heavy Wi-Fi interference is present in the BLE subnet and a cellular internet connection is used. In our paper, we show the behavior in two additional environments and also show that our approaches are able to cope with sudden changes in the network. To summarize, we have shown that BLE-based IoT applications experience loss and delay within the local BLE subnet as well as on the external network path. Coping with these problems requires new BLE models and a novel network timing estimation approach which we show in our work. We further show that BLE nodes can use our work to sustain end-to-end -end latency and reliability requirements while limiting their power consumption. Our approach is fully compliant to the BLE specification and the IP end-to-end -end principle. And furthermore, our approaches are fully agnostic to the used internet connectivity and the local RF environment of the BLE subnet. For more information on our work, please visit the website below. 
Thank you for your attention.